Welcome to this week's edition of the 12th District. I'm Kerry Condotta for NCW Life TV. Well, politics and business is what we do here on the 12th District, and they're both getting very, very interesting as we approach this big political year, which is directly entangled with the economy, which is our business side. So these two items are really starting to line up together. We're going to talk a little bit about that economy in the news uh, segment, the next segment. But in our second segment today, we want to talk about uh, in the state of Washington, what is the path to a majority? Now, that seems like a long shot, but it's not such a long shot based on some of the uh, work that's been done in polling and issue uh, results that we go out and test these uh, issues, and things are changing. Crime is a big issue, as you know. We'll talk more about that in the first segment as well. But uh, the, the, the places that are changing are outside of the cities. The suburbs that have typically gone more liberal are starting to become more conservative. It's understandable given the conditions uh, around crime. So we will take a look in the second segment of the House Challengers uh, Republicans and the Senate Republican challengers and where those areas are that the uh, Republicans, Republicans could make some big inroads in this particular election in this state. Now we know that across the nation uh, it is predicted the Republicans will take the House and probably strengthen the Senate. We'll see. Things change from week to week. But right now things are looking good uh, for the conservative side and we're going to examine exactly where those pockets are in this show in the second segment. All right, we'll come back and give you a few of the news stories, talk a little bit about this economy, which <laughs> just doesn't seem to have any real direction. It's a very scary position right now, and we'll, uh, we'll examine that in just a moment. Thanks for being with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, before we talk about our challenge candidates across the state of Washington for the House and the Senate, let's take a look at some of the news stories that have been uh, floating along in the last week or two. The economy continues to be the biggest concern in the United States, and for good reason. There are so many things pushing in the wrong direction that uh, nobody really knows where this is going to go. Uh, the stock market is up, it's down, it's uh, stabilized a bit la last week, but uh, of course this week we expect the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates again by probably another half a point, and that could again, uh, although some people think that's priced into the current market, I believe that could have a pretty shocking effect on the market if they do go the full half point. Uh, even folks like the CEO of Chase Bank, Jamie Dimon, says it is inevitable we'll have a recession under the current conditions. And as an economist, I tend to agree, and I'll tell you why. High gas prices, very high when you're now over $5 a gallon, is a major weight on this economy, and it ripples throughout from shipping, um, you know, trains and trucks and airplanes and ticket prices. Everything is affected by fuel and energy, and uh, that is going to make the disposable income side disappear, and we're starting to see it. There are reports from places like Walmart and Target that uh, Things are slowing down. Uh, the travel industry seems to still be fairly resilient, but those higher ticket prices will uh, end up reducing some people's ability to travel. Also inflation, although it starts starting to uh, flatten a bit, the latest numbers are slightly better, it's still raging pretty well. And of course, that's going to continue as long as the next issue, supply lines, uh, do not get cleared up. Now that is kind of a mystery as well. Um, we thought things would get better back to normal. Uh, they have not. Uh, when it comes to automobiles and other uh, large goods, uh, there is still a big shortage of these type of products. Uh, China has been part of the problem because they were shut down with COVID issues. That has been resolved, at least seems like it's resolved. And so China should come back online with some of the parts and components necessary to build these big ticket items. Now in other areas, Television sets are readily available. As a matter of fact, discounts are back in, in some of the large stores, and I think that's a combination of more product and probably less customers given, the again, the disposable income. Uh, travel restrictions, again, checked around uh, this week, and still a lot of restrictions and still a lot of issues. Uh, people a little nervous about booking anything when the planes get canceled. Over the three-day weekend, thousands of flights were uh, canceled. Uh, some were even, uh, some were delayed. 
Uh, the airline industry is a disaster right now. It can't seem to get its act together and get a consistent schedule going. That again is going to have uh, is going to create some problems. Uh, and of course, uh, the latest is a shortage of diesel fuel. We talked about this last week. is still uh, out there, although it looks like OPEC and some others are going to increase production of oil. Uh, diesel is still a concern, and the DEF, the fluid that runs the diesel trucks, and all the diesel equipment, by the way, construction equipment as well, is at an all-time low. And those products come from overseas. We do not produce a lot of that, so uh, we are subject to that as well. Of course, the last but not least, the war rages on over in Ukraine, and it seems like the Americans, uh, for some reason, want to keep it going because they keep sending more weapons and more uh, money to the Ukrainians who uh, are now down to fighting primarily in the Donbass region, a region which they basically rejected for the last several years. That's a Russian-speaking area that tends to be a little more Russian-oriented. And of course, those people were uh, even under attack from their own government. That was part of the Civil War we've talked about several times. So uh, with more weapons coming, uh, it looks like this war could go on for a while. I think a negotiated uh, settlement would be very good for all of us right now, and of course for the economy. Europe has uh, also stated they will no longer accept Russian oil, at least not from tankers. They will take some through the pipeline. Uh, this could create some dramatic e economic issues for the European community as well. So things are unsettled across the board on the economy. We'll be tracking it weekly and watching to see what's going to happen. But until those fuel prices come down, I don't see a lot of good news on the horizon. All right, well, politics, yeah, it's heating up. We've got uh, elections coming, uh, our own primary. The ballots come out on July 15th with the uh, primary on August 2nd. There are primaries happening all across the country right now. And, uh, of course, the uh, politics, uh, the politicians are posturing uh, just about the time you thought the abortion issue was going to be the big driver. Now, thanks to a few uh, uh, bad situations, uh, uh, major shootings, the gun issue has now resurrected itself and is uh, front and center, uh, at least with the House. Uh, I expect the House to pass some measures. I don't think the Senate will see uh, fit to pass a lot. Uh, it seems like, again, a knee-jerk reaction. So it looks like abortion and guns will be on the front lines, at least uh, through the primaries. We'll see how that shakes out. The economy is certainly number one right now. And I think the other two issues are more or less a smokescreen around that. Uh, I'm sure the talk of the filibuster will come again for the Senate because it looks like the Senate uh, will not move on a lot of these issues and hold out for the elections this fall. Again, ballots out in July for our very own primary. Back home, an interesting story that another one I've been on a different tack with, uh, election integrity. I have told you numerous times working in elections that there was no major fraud in the election in Washington State in 2020, the last election. Now, I, again, I do not speak for Pennsylvania, Arizona, or anybody else. This is the system that I know. And I worked in it, and we saw no anomalies at all. As a matter of fact, we've asked over, we've asked thousands of people to bring us one candidate anywhere in the state that lost due to election integrity, and that has never happened. And so the Election Integrity Committee, a group that was put together by folks that uh, really believe machines are being manipulated and votes are being changed and this kind of thing, went all the way to the Supreme Court, and uh, not only were they thrown out for lack of any credible evidence, because they don't have it, but beyond that, uh, they were fined $28,000 for wasting the court's time on a frivolous lawsuit. They have six more lawsuits in uh, process. Again, they're claiming electronic manipulations of machines, statewide vote flipping, and other things that just simply didn't happen. We have 39 auditors, 39 separate elections, and if there was any monkey business going on, those auditors would certainly see it. Is the system perfect? No, but it certainly isn't what these people are talking about. And I think it's time they take their energy and move on, hopefully, to elections, getting some people with credibility in there that actually will make the system better. It's not horrible, but it could be improved. And a lot of people would like to get back to in-person voting. That's not going to happen without a change in the majority, which we're going to be talking about shortly. Uh, Dan Newhouse, Representative Newhouse from the 4th, uh, has brought the Energy Committee out to uh, the Snake River dams and to Hanford to explain uh, why those dams probably need to remain. 
until a, a, a viable power source can be found to replace them. Uh, that is a problem across the United States as more and more people are switching to electric cars. Some of the grids now, even in Texas and other areas, of course, California has been challenged for some time, but the grids in other states are now starting to uh, max out. And uh, Dan Newhouse is trying to convince these guys what we need to do, and nuclear certainly is one of the options going forward. Uh, Idaho does have one of the new small modular nukes on the way, and so does Wyoming. Uh, the place they should be is right here in Washington State, and ironically, Jay Inslee will be touring Hanford about the same time as, as uh, Representative Newhouse. I'm sure that's uh, on purpose. And uh, maybe, maybe Jay Inslee will get a cue that the only way out of this carbon-free situation, or if you want carbon-free energy, small nukes are the answer, and we just happen to have Hanford right down the street. All right, now here's one for you. The Washington Business Council, right down the energy line again, has considered banning, are you ready for this? Natural gas, baseboard heaters, wall heaters, radiant heat systems, and electric furnaces in all single family homes, duplexes, and multifamily units in just a few years. Banning them completely. What that would leave is, I think, heat pumps is about the only way you would operate. Of course, all electric, again, putting more stress on the grid, but in general, that is a pretty radical approach. But what's worse is the Washington Building Council is is um, basically appointed and has no is not elected, has no accountability whatsoever to put these rules in place, but may do so. And of course, I'm sure Jay Inslee will be right behind all that. Now, the big issue of the year is crime. <laughs> well, this pursuit thing is getting crazy. Over a thousand people have now refused to stop. These have been recorded by various police agencies across the state. Over a thousand people are, have refused to stop because of the new pursuit laws that basically says they can continue. Uh, this is hard to believe, but that is exactly what's going on. People have uh, found out that they really don't need to stop. And uh, this particular law is really creating havoc among, well, just about everything in the United in the state of Washington. Also, um, <laughs> under the same lines, the Seattle uh, Police Department now says they expect to lose up to 200 more officers, despite their uh, offering bonuses and other benefits to come to Seattle. They expect to lose over 200 more officers this year, which will put them at a extremely low number with a huge amount of vacancies. <laughs> what could go wrong? Seattle has one of the worst criminal problems in the United States. And just to top it all off, in our Seattle news, seven months of parking tickets, that's thousands, tens of thousands of parking tickets, are going to be um, rejected or refunded by Seattle because somebody forgot to uh, renew the authority to give those. Legally, they didn't have the ability for the last seven months to do parking tickets, and so they either have to erase them or refund them Seattle just continues to devolve into a mess. All right, we're going to come back in a couple of minutes and talk about uh, the challenge candidates. These are candidates that are running in areas that are traditionally Democrat, but they're Republicans, and the polls and some of the issues say uh, they could win. We'll be right back to discuss that in just a moment. All right, well, let's discuss, uh, talking about elections, let's discuss the possibility, and I know this sounds long, like a long shot, but the possibility of a Republican majority in the House and Senate in Washington state. It seems almost uh, ridiculous that we'd even talk about it, but polls and uh, certain focus groups and issue-related uh, uh, items are pointing to some big gains, possibly, for the Republicans here in the state of Washington. Well, where where is it changing? What is shifting? And where is that happening? Well, here is the first 10 challengers in the House. We can tell you who they are and where they are. We will have some of these folks on the air with us over the next few weeks. We'll be inviting them in to tell us more about their stories. But let's just take a surface look at where the change could happen and where the Republicans could uh, get some control. First and uh, foremost, I should say, is an old friend of mine, Chad Magandaz. Chad was in the House for several years in the 5th District, which is in the Issaquah, a Snoh a Snoqualmie Plateau area. And uh, he is uh, a school teacher uh, that did uh, very well in previous elections. Unfortunately, the 5th District was lost to the Democrats a while back. But again, 
Polls and issue-related uh, investigations show that that area may be changing. I suspect the east side of Seattle in general is changing because they're fearful that all the problems in Seattle are moving east and out into the suburbs, and maybe they're going to look at a different type of leadership in those areas. We'll find out. But that's the Issaquah District. Next up, the 10th District. This is Woodby Island. It's always been a swing district. It's gone both ways, Democrat and Republican. It's military-based, of course, around Woodby Island. But the 10th District is showing about a five-point improvement for Republicans. That would be enough to put Karen Lissetmo, I believe it's Lissetmo, I hope I don't murder too many of these names, uh, could put her in a position to win in the House. Again, that's a, a seat currently held by Democrats that could swing. The 28th District, Susan Kielman. Now, the 28th District, again, like the 10th, has been a swing district. It's gone both ways. Republicans held it for many years. The last couple of years, it's gone Democrat. But this one, more than any, shows a huge swing, up to six or seven points, we've heard, moving the other way as Tacoma fights this incredible crime situation. People are fed up with crime in Tacoma, and this is where these candidates will be focusing. So that's 28th District House race is Susan Kielman. And again, the 28th is South uh, Tacoma area for the most part. 30th District, two challengers in the 30th District. This district, again, has gone both ways. Now, obviously, what we're looking at is swing districts that are very close, but polls indicate and issue-related uh, results are that these are moving towards the Republicans again. The 30th District is Federal Way to, and parts of Tacoma and Milton. And it has, again, gone both ways. We have two challengers, Casey Jones and Ashley Tagoya. And both of them uh, are stellar candidates in a district that could move. Uh, polls indicate that. This is, again, the Federal Way area also experiencing some pretty dramatic crime issues in the south end of Seattle, in the Seattle area, King County. All right, up north. Uh, another district that has gone both ways is the 42nd District. This is Bellingham, but it's also more of Whatcom County. It takes in Linden, some other more conservative areas. Bellingham is the liberal side of it. But the 42nd District, uh, there is uh, Tasha Dykstra is, uh, and Kyle Christensen. Those are two Republicans running for two seats that were both held by Republicans just a few years ago and trying to bring those back. Um, in the 44th district, now this is one of particular interest, a good friend of mine and someone who's been on this show, Mark Harmsworth, you've seen him here with the Washington Policy Center. Mark was in the house with me a few years back and his story is amazing. He came from England, he was not even a citizen until shortly before he ran the first time. He achieved his citizenship and uh, immediately ran for office. He was on the city council at Mill Creek and then was elected to the House of Representatives. And uh, he was again, that district slid the other way and was taken out a few years back. He's been with Washington Policy Center uh, since then and also owns his own business. But Mark is back and polls are showing him in pretty good shape in the 44th district. By the way, that's Mill Creek, Everett and Bothell. Uh, that is an area that again has gone uh, both ways. Last but not least, a district that is uh, very important and is showing a, a considerable change is the 47th district. This is in Kent and Auburn, uh, goes up onto the Covington Plateau out near Highway 18. Uh, we have two challengers, Carmen Goers, who I believe ran once before and got very close, and I think that is an open seat. And I'm gonna try to do this name, it's Kyle Labedevev. Labedevev, I'm sorry, that's a tough name. I suspect it's either Russian or Ukrainian because that area has a very large Russian population. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out, Kent, Auburn, and the Covering Plateau. So that's your top 10. Now those can change. They will move. Some of these folks may not do as well as expected, and some others may come on strong in other areas. But that is the top 10 right now. And of course, there are other challenge candidates that look pretty good. There could be 15 or 20 uh, seat swing. Remember, 1994, I think it was a 23 or 24 swing uh, vote to the Republicans, and things weren't nearly as bad in 1994 as they are now. Okay, let's take a quick look at the Senate before we run out of time. Uh, top Senate challengers over in uh, Bremerton, Silverdale, Port Orchard, that's the 26th district. His name is Jesse Young. Jesse has been in the House for years. I served with him most of the time I was there. A terrific candidate and a terrific uh, guy in general, and running in the 26th to take that Senate seat. 
Uh, there's been some very big controversy over in that area, and I think Jesse has a very good chance of picking that seat up. Back up in the 42nd, we go back to Bellingham. If you remember uh, a while back, a, a sitting senator died. Uh, his name was Doug Erickson. I served with him for 16 years. He was the senator from uh, the Whatcom County, Bellingham area for many, many years. He passed away, and Simon Sevzik, Sevzik, I believe is how it's said, is pronounced, was appointed to the seat. Now, if you're appointed to the seat, you have to run. Uh, Simon has made quite an impression over in the Senate since he's been there. He is uh, a really smart young man with a big future in politics and has a good chance of taking, uh, or I should say holding that 42nd seat uh, for us, and that's a, that's a good thing. In the 47th District, again, we're going back to the Kent Covington area, Bill Boyce, strong candidate there for Senate. And uh, the 30th District, yes, we are running not only two House members there, but uh, the um, Senate is up for grabs. That has been a seat that's gone both ways. And Linda Kochmar, longtime member of the House, former city council also in Federal Way, she is a very strong candidate there. Uh, I enjoyed serving with her, very nice uh, lady. And uh, I think she will do well in the 30th district. That's her home ground. A couple of others that are on, in surprising areas that have not swung the Republicans' way recently is 21st uh, district. Janelle Cass is running. That's up in Snohomish County. And a 45th district, which is one that uh, has, has been split for so many years and uh, now looks like uh, it's swinging back. The 45th is, believe it or not, Woodenville, Redmond, Snohomish. That's that east side I was talking about where crime is increasing, homelessness, and all kinds of issues are popping up. And I think the folks out there are ready to make some changes. So the 45th district, and that is Yika Hushangi. Yika Hushangi is running on the Republican ticket. All right. Here you have it, six Senate challengers. I think there'll be more in the Senate. There's some more we'll talk about. Um, and in the House, 10 members at least. I think it's closer to 15 that have a shot. We'll just have to see how the tide runs. You can never tell in these elections. It changes from week to week. There you have them. The challengers will be right back to wrap it up. Well, there you have it, folks. Business and politics running head on. Uh, a lot of uncertainty around both. As you know, the, the, the subject matter changes. We had abortion a few weeks ago. Now we have gun control. Who knows what's coming in the next few weeks? The economy will certainly stay front and center. And what is, which direction is it going? Well, we saw the headwinds that are before us. And how, how soon will those be resolved? We don't know. How soon will the war be resolved over in uh, Ukraine? We don't know that. The variables are amazing right now, and there's no way to predict much. So we'll be following it every week right here on the 12th District. We are going to bring you some of those challenge candidates we talked about, let you get a little closer look at these folks. That's some good, strong candidates I recruited for many years for the House, and this is a, a very good lot of candidates running on the Republican side. We'll see what happens. Again, the tide can change. In the meantime, don't forget our nightly news at 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. That's every weeknight here on the NCW Life channel. I am Kerry Condotta. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back next week to talk about more business and more politics as it changes so quickly. Thanks again.